We're about to do our first live IP version 6 config and we're going to see some other great information come up as a result of this simple config on the router in just a moment. But first, let's talk about this address that we're going to use on Router 2's Fast Ethernet 0 slash 0 interface. We know where every block of this address comes from now. So the first three blocks, that was the GRP given to us by our ISP. And then the fourth field is where we're doing the subnetting. That's actually our subnetting block, if you will. And since we wanted to use the first available subnet, it's going to be 0, 0, 0, 1. The rest of that field, the interface identifier, we're configuring that manually in this particular lab, and we wanted to use the first host address available. So what do we do? It's all zeros and a one at the end and a slash 64 mask. Now, nothing wrong with expressing that address in that format. That's the uncompressed format. But we also need to know how to compress it. And we want to compress it as far down as we can and applying both zero and leading zero compression techniques you see what we came up with at as the address and that's pretty good compression we knocked it down by over 50 percent if you want to count how many numbers you have to type in and here's a block by block breakdown of how i arrived at that address now with those first three blocks why did i leave block one alone are there some zeros in there there are two of them but they're not leading zeros we're either compressing leading zeros or we're compressing a block of all zeros, right? Either leading zero or zero compression. There's no such thing as middle zero compression. You're not gonna be able to drop anything there. So the first three blocks, we leave those alone. The fourth block, we compress that from zero, 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 one, all the way down to one with which kind of compression? We're using leading zero compression there. We're dropping the three leading zeros and we can do that as often as we want to in any IP version six address. Blocks five, six, and seven just sitting there waiting for zero compression, right? Three consecutive blocks of zeros. We replace those with a double colon, and that is the one instance of zero compression we're going to use because that's as many as we can use. Block eight is compressed then with leading zero compression from zero, 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 one down to one, and that is pretty darn good compression. Now, before we put this IP address on there, um, we mentioned about not using the subnet ID address as a host address, the subnet ID itself, which in this case is what? It's the exact same thing as the full address we see here, except that last one would be a zero. So we know the subnet ID is 2001111222200001 slash 64. Let's try putting that address on an interface, exactly what happens, and also a little extra information for you here, because one of the frequently asked questions you get immediately when you start talking about IP version 6 is, well, can I run IP version 4 on the same router? And as I'm showing you here, yes, you can. Now, you have to watch your show commands, and I'll show you exactly what I mean here once we've configured a little IP version 6. But here, I have the same config that we've had on the serial interface on router 2 really throughout the course. And I've got a static IP route there, a version 4 IP route, and there's nothing wrong with that. They are not mutually exclusive. You can run version 4 and version 6 on the same router, no problem whatsoever. Something you do have to do, though, with version 6, it's a little bit different. Now, as far as IP version 4 goes, we have configured static routes, we've configured RIP, we're going to configure EIG or an OSPF, but when we configured version 4 really throughout the course, did I have to enable it? No, because it's enabled by default. Version 6 is not. IP version 6 is not enabled by default on a Cisco router. Let me show you this command, which I would be astonished if it didn't come up somehow on your exam. It's IPv6 unicast routing. Now, this enables routing, version 6 routing, on the router as a whole, really. Because what you can do, if you configure your interfaces first and you put IPv6 addresses on them, you have enabled version 6 on that interface. The problem is routing's not going to work until you run this command. So it can drive you a little nuts, or actually a whole lot nuts, if you happen to leave this command out, but the rest of your config for version 6 is fine. So I strongly recommend to you, whenever you're starting a lab with version 6 or uh, config for a customer, doesn't matter, always enter this command first. 
you know, it's kind of like NAT when you just put IP NAT inside and IP NAT outside up immediately on the right interfaces. The first thing you want to do with version 6 is enter this command because without it, uh, we are in Nowheresville, baby. Now, let's go over to the interface. And first key <laughs> is putting IPv6 address there because this is good this is tied in with what I was mentioning with show commands and it can be a little frustrating when you first start using version 6 especially if you've been using version 4 for a long time if you're an experienced network admin if you're not no worries that's okay but if you have been using Cisco routers for a while and you've been entering all these commands that start with IP it's really hard to remember hey I gotta start putting IPv6 in and you might not break anything, but it could get a little confusing for the router, especially when you start running show commands. So you see the options here for IPv6, and look at that. You know, we see something obtain an IPv6 address using DHCP. Nice to know DHCP is still around because while this lab is very important and is packed with vital information for your exam, uh, we really don't want to go around to every host device in our network and manually configure a 128-bit address, right, even if we've compressed it a little bit. Uh, so it's interesting that DHCP can still be used for version 6, and we are going to be doing that and seeing exactly how that works later in this section. We also have a message that says obtain address using something called auto configuration. Uh, I'm all for configuration, especially if it's being automatically done, so I have a feeling we'll be looking at that. Then we have something second from the top there called a link local address. We haven't hit that yet, but we're going to. That is the next section, actually. But what we are doing right now is putting in this IPv6 prefix, and you see the format for that. So just a little teaser there. I want to let you know we are going to look at DHCP and uh, especially link local addressing. We'll see all of that in action. But right now, let's stick with this manual addressing. I want to put in... One, 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 two, 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 and then one. And then let me try slash 64 right there. Now, this would be the address for the actual subnet ID that we're working with right now. Because you can see the first three blocks are the same, then the fourth block, we leading zero, compress that down to one. And if we were using the subnet ID here, all of the last four blocks would be zeros. So we would put a double colon in and that would be the end of it. Now I put a slash 64 in and I got an invalid input detected at caret. I call that a caret, you can call it whatever you want to. But you know that looks pretty good to me. Well the thing is with most iOS versions you've got to have this all connected. And you see there you know it was accepted, it went in. So if you ever see that carrot pointing at your slash and you're thinking, well, I got the address right. This is the right command. That's the reason. You just have to slide it over one and have it all connected. Here's the warning I wanted to show you. If you enter the subnet ID itself as a host address, you're going to get this warning from a Cisco router. Now, that address has been accepted and it's calling it a subnet router anycast. I know we haven't gotten to the term anycast, but I wanted to show you this now. Basically, this is a fancy way of saying, hey, this is the subnet ID number itself. You can't put this on a host or you shouldn't. But the thing is, the router will accept it. So what I'm gonna do, since I have been warned about it, is that I will repeat the command with my up arrow, do a control A, move the cursor to the front, and you know what I'm gonna type there, the word no. So we know not to do that, and we also know the message that we're going to see. At the beginning of the very next video, we are going to pick up right here. We'll apply our first IP version 6 address and start examining a couple of values that will result from that configuration, and that's all coming up next.